What's up? What's that? July's over? They need to know what games I played? Let's check them out. What's up, guys? My name is Gabriel from Board Games and Barbells. If we're just meeting, where you been? Just kidding. Thank you for being here. Uh, for everybody else, welcome back. It's time to see what games I played for the month of July 2021. July was an awesome month of playing board games. I got nine new games to the table. Now, they're new to me, not necessarily new games that came out recently, but new games to me, and I got to play them for the first time this month. Something to remember, during my monthly board game rundowns, you're gonna see games that you've seen before. For the most part, I'm the one who supplies the games to the game nights, and it's my collection, so I'm going through and playing my game. So you might see a game that you've seen before, and that's okay, but every now and then, I'll be playing some of my friend's games or uh, a game that I don't actually have. The first game that I played in July was Rolling America. This is a quick, light-ish, um, roll and write game that is based off the game Rolling Japan. It is what they consider a multiple solitaire game. That means that I can play solo or I can play with, you know, up to, it doesn't matter how many people, as long as I've got sheets. Um, but our turns don't affect each other. So I'm doing what I wanna do on my turn, the other player's doing what they wanna do, we have no player interaction, nothing like that. Um, but this game is, is really cool. We have, there are six different colors, but seven dice. One die is a wild die. Each round you're pulling out six dice. So one color is not gonna be drawn um, each round. But what you're doing is in the different colors, you have to put the number from the same die in the same area of the United States. And the tricky part is the numbers. So they have to be the same number or plus or minus one number. So if I put a four in one area, the bordering states or locations, the bordering areas have to be a four, a three, or a five. That's easy, right? This game is brutal. If you put a four here, but two spaces away, you accidentally put a one, you can never put a number there. You'll have to put an X, and the person with the least amount of Xs wins, which is really cool, because you usually get the most points, but this is the least Xs, so it's kind of like that golf score type of thing. This game is fun, but it is rough and brutal. You'll be playing, and you're like, why is my score so high? Why can I get this to work? but it's a great time. The next game we played in July was Draft a Source. Now this game I do not have. I actually gifted it to my sister-in-law and I got to see her over the month of July and I was so excited to play this game. It is quick. It is a quick, light drafting game. Draft a Source. You're drafting dinosaurs. It is what I think of as like Sushi Go mixed with Herbaceous because you have a handful of dinosaurs you pick which one you want to use, and then you're passing the rest. That's like Sushi Go. Um, but where you draft, where you put them in your park or zoo, you have different pins that have different rules. So you've got like a pin that has all of them the same. You have a pin that's like all different types of dinosaurs. So that makes me think of Herbaceous a little bit. But the trick is you've got a die that um, the active player rolls a die, and you have restrictions on where you can place your dinosaurs. So the active player gets to place, them, place their dinosaur wherever they want. But the other players have to obey the die and follow that rule. So you might have the perfect place for this dinosaur, but you roll the uh, die face that says it has to be an empty pin. But you want to place it in the similar pin where all the dinosaurs are similar. So we'll be getting this game soon, I know it. it was. It was so much fun, it was awesome. Next game, also gifted to my sister-in-law, we got to play this one too, it's called Abandon All Artichokes. A fun, light deck building, quick deck building game, but it's really, it's like reverse deck building because you have artichokes, your starting hand is all artichokes. And the goal at the end of the game is, you know, like in deck building, you have your, your deck of cards, when you draw five cards to form your hand, when you have zero artichokes, game is over you win the game 
but you are acquiring different cards and the cards you're hoping let you discard, get rid of an artichoke. So the goal is to have different cards in your hand that you've acquired, uh, purchased, and eventually get rid of and abandon all artichokes. Fun fact, I don't really like artichokes that much. If I'm getting spinach dip, I would prefer spinach dip, not spinach and artichoke dip. You, you care? No? Anyway, next game. Um, it's not a new game to me. The previous two games were new. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, but the previous two games were new to me. Draft Source and Abandon Art, All Artichokes I had not played before. Um, next one was Railroad Inc., a game that we play a ton, a ton in our house. Um, me and my wife love to go at it in this game. Railroad Inc. is a roll and write game where you are trying to build a network of railroads, highways, trying to connect into, into specific exits, um, longest highway, longest railroad, things like that. Uh, it's pretty quick, but it can require some thinking if you're really trying to do well. Um, but it can be played solo, up to six people. It's similar to Rolling America where it doesn't matter what we do. Like we're not affecting each other. So you can play it by yourself solo just as easy as with five people. Next we have Welcome To, and maybe my favorite roll and, roll and write, flip and write game. A lot of fun. Um, we played just the base game, but really excited. I picked up the Barnes & Noble exclusive. It is called Welcome to the Dry Erase Expansions. I actually did a video talking all about it, giving my first impressions, a little review on it, and an unboxing in this card right up, right up above. So please check that out. It's a Barnes & Noble exclusive. And I've had some people say, no, it's not. Well, it says on the box, Barnes & Noble exclusive. And people don't think it is because you can go to the website and pick up different expansions for Welcome To. There are several out there. Um, but this is the only box that has four expansions in it, winter, summer, Halloween, and spring. Those four expansions, and they're all dry erase boards. So each one has one expansion dry erase board on one side, and then on the other side has the base game. So check out that video. But we played the summer expansion, a lot of fun. Not too different, but it has this one thing in it that the other, the base game doesn't have, and that's ice cream. It has ice cream cones and ice cream trucks. So basically when you start in a row of houses, if you, it makes you want to start toward the end, one end or the other, high or low, uh, because when you start, the ice cream truck is going to start as well. So if you put a a 14 in an ice cream truck happens to come from the high side it will go just a little bit go to that 14 and if you have an ice cream cone there you circle it but then if you the next number you put in is a one it goes all the way to the end and you miss all that ice cream so it makes you have to go kind of in order um, small change but can really switch up strategies and change up the rules um, especially because my wife tends to win a lot at welcome to and this little rule this little variant uh, made her rethink her strategy and i think she still beat me it's okay but it was a lot of fun it was a cool game next we played a game called diced cheese this might be one you've never heard of um, the publisher reached out to me and sent me a game which i really appreciate thank you for that um, it is a simple dice rolling game but the dice are cheese they're like little wedges of cheese little triangle triangular prism you know wedges of cheese and depending on how you roll if it's um if it lands on the logo side, it's good. You can put it in the wheel of cheese. You're trying to create the wheel of cheese. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, but logo side up. Um, and if you get it to land on the side that makes it like stand up like this, kind of like a little pyramid, it lets you re-roll some dice. It, it was a lot of fun, quick, easy, light game. I mean, it's like the size of this, so you can keep it with you, carry it around easily and um, Really funny, had a lot of cheese puns, so uh, yeah, fun little game. Next we played Seven Wonders Duel. So got to play a lot of board games with, um, 
with some great friends and started that off with playing Seven Winners Duel against my buddy from college. And we dueled it out. Uh, we played about three games of this. I think I won two and he won one. Um, either way, Seven Winners Duel is like a rendition of Seven Wonders, but it's two player only. Because Seven Wonders, you technically need three to seven players. But this game is, they do such a good job of having a drafting game with two players. And it's a duel, because you can technically win with science. You can get enough science cards to win, and the game just ends once you have the six uh, science card, different science cards. Or you can win with military. If you push the military all the way to a, a certain spot on your opponent's side, you win, game is over. Or if neither one of those things happens, the victory points that you've accumulated throughout the game, you will count those up and see who is the winner. Uh, but it's a drafting game. It's similar to Seven Wonders where it has three different ages. You are building wonders. Instead of building your wonder, different parts of your wonder, you are creating more than one wonder. Um, this game is, I could play this game right now. It is awesome. I love the dual aspect. It's like, hey, if I'm pushing that military, you better do something about it. You better change your strategy. And if not, I'm just going to win or science or whatever it may be. Um, I might like it better than the original Seven Wonders. Mm, it's fun. Next, we played Small World. So my same uh, buddy from college, he likes to play Risk. He's big into area control. And I was like, let me bring an area control game that he hasn't played before. And the one I chose was Small World. And this game is you are trying to get the most victory points by conquering different regions of small world um, and we played four player version so it was a lot going on but you have different races with their special powers and that will change how you approach the game how you you take on so if you've got someone who gets an extra point for for having conquered a forest region that might make you want to of course gravitate toward the forest or there are mining there there's different things different special powers and your race has its own special ability also they're randomized so you might be a berserk wizard or a flying human it, you never know. It always changes. It's always changing, so that keeps the game fresh and keeps the game fun and makes you want to play it again. Next, we play Karuba, the card game. Um, it is a tile-laying, pattern-building game with bidding. I like bidding games. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, and you're trying to connect the correct explorer to the correct temple. And I usually do really well with this game, but I lost both times. But it's fun, quick filler game, light game, and you know it's it's you're in and out. It's something that you know just something different, but it, it is fun. And something interesting interesting about uh, Karuba the card game is typical tile lane games you can rotate the tiles around, but you cannot with this game. So that gives it a little different element of strategy and really messing with your mind and making sure you do it all correctly. Then we played Cubitos, and I love this game. Spoiler alert, I love it. Um, it's a dice drafting, dice building, or like dice pool building, because you're buying different dice and um, collecting a pool of dice, and you want the best ones, of course, because it's a, it's a pool building game, or deck bag building game, however you want to look at it. Um, and it's a push your luck game and a racing game, a lot of things in one, but it is fun. It is awesome. So uh, we've been playing like the first setup they give you, like the, the basic track and the basic dice uh, abilities. And I think my wife cracked the code because she kept winning. I, I mean, just kept winning this one. We played that two times in a row. She won both times. So then we switched it up and went to like the second level let's say where it's a different map different cards and that really changed up the game changed up strategies my wife lost but i still lost i did not win i can i've not won this game once but i love it so much Let, mm, it's a great game but i just haven't been able to win yet but that was cubitos and it was it was great next we played unmatched battle of legends volume one an asymmetrical miniature fighting game where you're different characters and you have different abilities 
There's some similarities to each character, uh, but you have a deck of cards and you play those cards and you're trying to maneuver around the map. That's one thing you can do. You can scheme and then attack your opponents. Huh. This is like all the hotness for me right now. I'm, I'm digging this game, loving this game right now. I played, I played against Sinbad each time. Played three games of this and played against Sinbad each time. So um, that might not be good for who I'm playing against because I'm figuring out Sinbad. Maybe, maybe not. I got lucky. I did win each last month. I don't know if you remember, but I lost both times I played this game. This month I won all three times. Um, but I played as Medusa and then Alice. Alice twice. And I really liked Alice when I was playing with her this, this past time. She's kind of sneaky good. Her being able to switch sizes, yeah, I like her a lot. She's good. Then I played another new game to me. Um, my buddy is a big uh, Catan fan and played Rivals for Catan, which is formerly known as Catan the Card Game. Uh, but it, it involves card drafting, of course, dice rolling, and you are figuring out who will build the best kingdom during different eras of Catan. So basically you're seeing who gets the most victory points or who reaches a certain victory point and that's the winner. It has Catan elements that make it feel familiar, but also it's a very different game than Catan. And I like that because Catan got me into the hobby, but I just don't play that as much. Um, but I really, I enjoyed this game. I would like to play it again. We only played it once. I would like to give it another go because it seemed like I was figuring it out right when it was over. So I'd like to give that one another shot. Next, we played Good Critters, a game that sat on my shelf of shame slash opportunity, shelf of opportunity for th almost three years now. Don't know why, it's a light party game with bluffing, negotiation, and it was cool. It was, it was un I mean, not that I thought it would be not good, but it was just better than I expected. And you have different actions you can do. So you have a boss, it's like you had like a heist, you had like a robbery or something like that. And there's one player that's the boss. They split up the loot. There's like six cards split up well, with four players. There's six loot cards uh, from 1,000 to 5,000. And the boss splits up the loot. And if you like the way the loot was uh, distributed, you can, one of your actions, it could, you pick one action, it could be vote yes, you like it, vote no, you thought it was not good, not fair, or you can skim, which is taking the top card off the draw pile, which is, which is money, so you could get some money. But if you skim and someone else skimmed before you, you get nothing. You can rob, you can rob one of the players, or you can guard, which is, allows them not to be able to rob you. It's a lot of fun. It was really cool. Light game, I like you got these little critters, you got these little animal type people that look like little mobsters. Really cool, artwork was fun. Um, but I was surprised by that game. It was a good game. After that, we stuck to the bluffing negotiation type theme and we played Sheriff of Nottingham. So you are basically in Sheriff of Nottingham. You are a merchant trying to get goods through to, to Nottingham, goods or contraband. You gotta get past the sheriff. And this game was probably the funniest game we played all month. I mean, it was just, I've had it for years, just so much fun. It was laughter, laughter, it was great. It depends on the group you play with. If, with the right group, this game is awesome. But it was a lot of fun. The ending, the last round, my wife was the sheriff and she just happened to like check each bag. No one had contraband, so she was giving out money at the last round and I think she would've won, but either way, it was just, it was funny, it was fun. Next, we played another new game to me, um, and I think it was the surprise of the month. Thinking that it was gonna be okay, but it was much better than expected. And that game was Nine Tiles Panic. It is a real-time pattern building, tile placement game where you have to fulfill one of, or you have to fill three objectives each round. You don't have to. Like one round, it could be like the most boys and the most aliens facing a agent with the fewest roads. So you have to figure out like, what am I gonna go for? Like, am I gonna go for the most boys, the fewest road? Like I need to focus somewhere or you can kind of spread your focus out between the three, but it's real time. So you, whoever's the fastest 
gets the number one token, second, two, three, then four. And that could mean nothing. You know, you might have finished first, but you didn't fulfill the objectives very well, so it didn't really matter. But anytime you tie on an objective, the fastest person gets the points, gets the higher point value. So it pays to go fast, but it turns into panic. I've played the game a few times now, and just watching people, like once you finished, you flip the sand timer, and you're just watching people frantically try to get done. And it can be pretty funny from that perspective. It was the sleeper of the month. It was the surprise of the month. It was a good time, fun game. Next, we played Arboretum a game about set collection and hand management, trying to craft the best Arboretum, all while keeping your opponents from building their best Arboretum. This game's brutal. It is brutal. You, so the way it works is you have to lay down cards orthogonally to create chains of increasing value cards that are in the same, same type of tree. And at the end of the game, you have to have the highest value of that tree that you laid down in your hand at the end. Like you have to manage your hand so well in this game and it's so hard to do. Um, if you don't have the highest value and someone else does, you don't get those points. So you might've worked so hard, but you've got no cards left and someone else has just like a three and they keep you from getting those points. It's unreal. That's why it's so brutal because I see my opponent has a sweet, nice, gonna get a lot of points, but I've got a seven and I know they don't have cards in their hand to match that, so they're not gonna get points. It's insane, but it's so fun. Next, we play Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, a worker placement game that um, is in the Tiny Epic series where you are placing workers out, trying to get different dinosaurs in your farm, but you have to think about the breeding, you have to think about what they eat, are they in the same pen as another dinosaur where they will escape or eat another one? It's insane. This game was fun, but I'm sad because I felt like we were just working out the kinks the first game. We should have played it again. Uh, we will play it again, but I just feel like it didn't give it its justice, its true justice. So I'm excited to give this one another shot. Lastly, we played Marvel United, a fun cooperative game where you are Marvel heroes and you're trying to stop the bad guy, the villain, from accomplishing what they need to accomplish to win the game. It's a lot of fun. Um, we happen to play against Red Skull with Captain America, Hulk, Black Widow, and Iron Man. We lost. We did not beat the Red Skull, but I can't wait to play this one again. It, it was fun. It's, it's got a lot of things that you can change up with it, different characters, and I'm excited for it. Well, wow, those are all my games I played in July 2021. What games did you play? What was your favorite game that you played this July? Let me know in the comments and I would love to connect with you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, joining my community. I would love to connect with you and that would just mean so much to me. Thank you so much for tuning in and remember to keep playing games and go get those games.